I spent a whole week out on a boat in the beautiful islands of the Exuma Bahamas. And in this video, I'm going to show you the top 10 things that you need to do while you're here. It was easily one of the best experiences that I've ever had and one that I would definitely not forget. So I was here for about seven days with at least 10 other people. And the whole goal of this trip was to capture content and just have a good time. So there's really two ways to go about your trip in the Bahamas. One way is just to have your average tour guide and pay them to take you to all of the tourist attractions and have fun. The other way, which is less experienced by, is to hire out your own captain and catamaran or boat and set sail into the oceans and just sleep on a boat for a whole week. I did the latter of the two and I will have to say it was totally worth it. But if you're someone who gets seasick easily, bring some Germamine. One of the pros of having your own captain and boat is that most of these activities that I'm going to tell you, you can do these all for pretty much free, minus a few supplies that you might need for each one. But overall, all the fun things are pretty much free. Now this list is not going in any specific order, so just keep that in mind. With that being said, let's jump into the first activity you should do is Iguana Island. Iguana Island is located in Bitter Guana K. When you hear K, I think that just means island. Sometimes they call it Key, K. I'll, I'll go with K. Actually, I'll go with Key. So yeah, Iguana Island is literally what it sounds like. It's an island you go to, to hang out with the iguanas, feed them grapes, and just have fun and take some cool pictures. Pro tip here is to bring a lot of grapes as well as lettuce, because iguanas love that, and also bring a long toothpick, or skewer actually, so that you can put the grapes on them to feed the iguanas safely. Last thing you want is for an iguana to bite your finger. The island's not that big. You can actually walk around it pretty easily in a short amount of time. After you've had fun with the iguanas, I do recommend just walking around the island just to take in the sights. I think there was a small Aztec ruins in there. Nothing crazy, but still cool nonetheless. Next item on our agenda was visiting Pablo Escobar's plane. Yes, you heard that right. Now there's a lot of folklore revolving around this tale, but pretty much it was one of Pablo's henchmen who flew the plane into the ocean and lost a lot of precious cargo, if you know what I mean. Since then, that plane has just sat there waiting to be explored by local tourists such as you and I. The unique thing about this plane is that it is located in fairly shallow waters, shallow enough that you can see the plane visibly from the sky, depending on the level of the tide. So the pro tip here is to go with someone who knows how to read tide charts and know when low tide or high tide is, because you probably wanna go when it's low tide so that you can actually stand on top of the plane. And if you're a drone pilot, then you can get some pretty cool pictures from a bird's eye view. This is a pretty big touristy area. So bear in mind, you might not get the perfect picture you want, but if you wait it out long enough, I'm sure you'll get it. Now, if you plan on swimming through the plane, I highly recommend you to be very careful because that plane is rusty and it is sharp. Last thing you want is to get some tetanus cuts out in the Bahamas. Next on the list is swimming with sharks in the ocean. Now I'm not sure if this activity is on any tour guide's itinerary, but the captain we went with knew exactly what he was doing and has done this multiple times. So that's why I do recommend yourself finding a captain to take you on this trip. And if you're looking for a good one, I highly recommend this guy, Tyson. Link in the description down below. So what he likes to do is set anchor in the middle of the ocean and start chumming the water to gather around some sharks. Yeah, actual sharks that have not been trained or anything. These are wild sharks. After the water is chummed and the sharks have gathered around the boat, curious and semi-hungry, we let them calm down a bit before we actually jump in the water. Once we throw our test subject into the water to see if the water is safe, then we all make our way into the water and witness the beauty that is sharks. It really just goes to show you that sharks are not as dangerous as we were taught to believe they are. They're really just like any other fish that you would find in your aquarium or fish tank, except they have really big and sharp teeth that could eat you at any moment. But if you forget that last thought, then it's really cool to see these sharks right next to you. I'll be the first to admit that I was initially very scared to go into that water. But after seeing everyone else in it and the lack of blood in the water, I felt it was safe to go in. And man, am I happy that I did. Now, after we had our fun swimming with the sharks, we got out of the water and started to have some more fun with them in a playful manner. We decided to test our strength to see how heavy a shark actually is. 
and we positively determined that they are pretty dang heavy. Now, I personally do not recommend trying to lift a shark in any manner. It is very dangerous. My friend here has been training all his life for this moment, so he was prepared for it. But if you are not confident at all, or at the least bit terrified of sharks, I would not recommend doing this. I can definitely say that it was a good idea that we swam with them first before we started feeding them, because after we were feeding them, you start to see how big and sharp their teeth actually are. And the moment you step in that ocean, you, my friend, are no longer on top of that food chain. There it is! Yes. There it is. Oh my god! Now, if you were not daring enough to play with the wild sharks in the ocean, fret not because there is a tourist-friendly shark attraction over at Compass Key. At this attraction, you have the opportunity to swim with the nurse sharks for about $10 a person, if I recall correctly. Now, this is nowhere as scary as swimming with the wild sharks in the ocean, because these sharks here are trained and, for the most part, pretty tame. They're nurse sharks. I think they have a gentler nature compared to the reef sharks we were swimming with. And since it is a tourist attraction, it would make sense for them to be tamed or trained enough so that they won't be killing tourists every single time you try to feed them. I personally think this is a great first exposure to sharks if you are someone who is already scared of them. These sharks will literally get on top of you and you could probably even pick them up if you really wanted to. Not that I recommend you to, but I think people do pick them up. Overall, it's a cool experience, but us who had the real experience with the sharks in the ocean were a bit underwhelmed seeing these nurse sharks here in this bay. Next experience on our list is the Sea Aquarium. This sea aquarium is located near O'Brien Key. I'm positive it's on a list of tour guides experiences, so you could do this with a tour guide or you could ask your captain to take you to it. It's pretty easy to get to, just dock your boat, get on your dinghy, head over to the sea aquarium. There's signs for it, literally. Put your snorkeling gear on and go down. Now, the trick to getting all of these crazy fish to show up at you and make it look like an actual aquarium is to bring a water bottle filled with bread. Now, I think the trick here was to cut a hole in the bottle cap so that you can just squeeze the bottle and let the bread flow out. That way that will attract all the fish to surround you and just make it look like you're in Finding Nemo. This was a really cool experience for me to witness. And I think if you are out here in the Bahamas and you have the opportunity to do this, I highly recommend it. One, it's kind of cool just to have all that fish surround you. And two, it just makes for a pretty dope photo. Now, if you're looking for something laid back and chill to do, then ask your captain or tour guide to find you a sandbar. What is a sandbar? Pretty much just a mound of sand that you can walk on when low tide is happening. It's like a little island strip that you can walk down, usually during sunrise and maybe at some point during the evening. I'm not really sure how high tide and low tide works, but there are certain parts of the day where the water level will be lower and that is a great time for you to walk on these sandbars. It's cool to just walk around, take some pictures, grab some videos, and just enjoy the sunrise if you're going during sunrise. Best part, it's completely free to do like most of the activities on this list. Next place you have to visit is one of my favorites, Thunderball Grotto. It's a pretty cool name, not sure where it comes from, but basically it's pretty much a cavern that you have to swim under, or if you're up for it, you can jump into from the top of the cliff. Now the jump is probably 10 to 15 feet, Nothing crazy, but I do recommend you to be careful and make sure you jump through the hole properly. My captain has personally seen some people jumping too far and clipping part of themselves on the cliff and the rock, and that's just not a good experience. I highly recommend if you're the adventurous type to climb up there and jump in because it's probably the most height and cliff jumping activity you'll get here in the Bahamas. One of the cool things about Thunderball Grotto that I personally like is the fact that you have to swim underneath rocks to get to here. Granted, it's nothing crazy and you should be having your snorkeling gear on, but it's still cool nonetheless. Up next, we have Pig Beach, which is near Big Major Key. This place is a pretty touristy area, which how can you deny these pigs are so cute? The purpose here is to enjoy the pigs, pet them, have fun with them, take some pictures and primarily feed them. Now, the trick here is that you need to know the secret sign to let the pigs know that you're out of food because if you have food in your hand, they will chase you and they will not stop. And if they keep chasing you, there is a secret sign that the locals know to tell the pigs pretty much to stop and that you have no food and they'll just go on their merry way. It's actually really cool because when you first see these pigs, they're very large. And unless you're a professional pig wrangler or pig farmer, 
I doubt you've seen pigs like this before, so you might be a little intimidated at first when they start running after you the moment they see that you have food on yourself. Remember to figure out that sign. I wish I could tell you the sign, but that would kind of defeat the whole mystery here. Foods that I recommend to bring are a big box of carrots, because the pigs love them. And just keep in mind that they will chase you into the water if you have food. Once they've calmed down a little after you're done feeding them, pick up a piglet, because it is the cutest thing in the world. But just be wary that they will start squealing after you've held them a little bit too long. Don't worry, they're fine. They just don't like being off the ground, I guess. Now I'm sure at this point you've had enough crazy adventures and want to relax a little and enjoy yourself a nice little pina colada. Well, lucky for you, Bar Staniel Key Yacht Club is where you want to be. Basically, it's a cool spot to hang out, play pool, and just relax on the island. You'll find a lot of locals here, as well as tourists that are staying on the island, but it's just your local bar to hang out, relax, grab a drink, and just let loose. I recommend walking around the island on a scooter if you can get one, because it's pretty cool. And you can literally get through the island in like 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Or you can just walk the island too. That's cool. If you have the time, I definitely recommend going out to Green Turtle Key because here you get to swim with the sea turtles. Literally, I was swimming with a sea turtle. That was kind of awesome. Park your boat, get in the water, put on your snorkeling gear, start swimming, and once you see one, just catch up to it and start swimming. It's so cool to see these turtles actually swim because every now and again, they have to go above water to grab some air. Then they can swim for such a long period of time before they need to go back up to grab more air. It was super unique and I actually had a hard time keeping up with the turtle. Besides the turtles, it's just a nice little island to hang out at. Definitely check it out if you can and don't leave until you find a sea turtle. And those were the main activities that I would highly recommend for anyone going out to the Exuma Bahamas to try out. Now, besides from these top 10 attractions, I'm gonna throw in some bonus ones of other things you can do in the Bahamas. First is you can practice your free diving literally anywhere. Now, this might be limited to if you have a captain, but basically our captain just dropped anchor in the middle of the deep ocean and we just dropped a line and started practicing our free diving. This all depends on your group and if they're interested in free diving and want to push their limits. But if they do, this is a very cool limit to pass and it's very interesting to witness it. Free diving is tough. I couldn't really go that deep, but I think it's really cool when people can. There's actually another sunken plane over at Staniel Key where you can practice your free diving, swim down on the rope and trying to touch the plane. Your ears are gonna hurt, but if you can accomplish this, it's a pretty cool feat. Then there's this quote unquote water slide that you can check out. Pretty much it's just like this canal that you're swimming through with your dinghy, but if you look at it from an aerial view, it looks like a water slide. So we checked that out, that was cool. You can pick up starfish in the sea, then you can catch wild fish in the sea with a spear gun or catch it the old fashioned way with a fishing rod. And make sure you have a proper chef who knows how to prep a fish. And finally, one of my favorite things to do is just to jump off your boat and have fun with your friends in the water. You're in the Bahamas and these waters are crystal clear and very, very warm. There's never a bad time to be in the water. So have fun, jump into the water, do some flips, go crazy. Just have a good time. And those are my recommendations on what to do if you make it out here to Eczema, Bahamas. These islands are beautiful, the water is clear, the people are friendly, food is good. If you're looking for tropical paradise, you can't go wrong here. I am very grateful that I was able to experience this journey with a group of close friends and I cannot wait for the next adventure. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And if you're interested on how to travel to Tulum, Mexico, then check out this video here. Peace.